What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the slide. It has been a long time since we made one of these, and we just wanted to reset some of our thoughts on Mac Jones. We've had a full season uh, since we made one of these, and we wanted to give our takes since then. Um, I have my brother Daniel here with me, uh, and he is going to give some of his thoughts on Mac Jones. Uh, they're a little bit more negative, I guess you could say, than what we've heard before. So, uh, Daniel, you want to open the table? Yes, right. I would love to open the table. So to start off, um, I just wanted to set the scene for what Mac's career has been so far. Um, this is a way to remind people, maybe just assess the situation as a whole. Mac Jones, everyone agrees he had a good rookie season. Um, he came into the league as a NFL starter. He was he was ready to be a starter out of the draft. That was his rep. He had not a lot of talent, but was ready to play, strong mind, good brain for the game. And he had a good rookie season. I'm not going to take away anything from Max's rookie season, so we, I feel we can just move on from that. People have talked about it at length. He had a good rookie season. As we know, some big changes were made to the coaching staff in year two uh, with the, uh, the arrival of Matt Patricia and Joe Judge. Um and Mac Jones did not have a good second year. I don't think anyone would make the case that he did. He uh, had to deal with a lot of adversity, which has given him a pass in a lot of people's eyes. And I'm just not sure I really am willing to give him a pass on his second year. I think Mac contributed to a lot of the negativity surrounding the team. I think he handled it like he had never faced adversity in his life. He showed a lot of immaturity, insubordination, and I don't want to give him a pass. I don't think he was dealt a good hand, but I don't think he handled it well to begin with either. So I wanted to kind of begin by posing you a question with all that in mind. I think Mac Jones is going to be the starting quarterback this year. And a lot of people are saying it's his make or break year. So I am not a Mac Jones guy. I would say you are a Mac Jones guy. For sure. Do you think that Mac, so the, to, to really summarize everything, there are two camps those who think Mac was had a good rookie season, and there's every reason to believe he's going to have a good third year with the arrival of Bill O'Brien as the offensive coordinator. And there are people who align more with me who think Mac Jones has a lot of issues internally. Um, he's not as mentally tough as people said. And do you think that he really should have lost a lot of the positivity he built up in year one? And I people don't think he's the guy. I don't think he's the guy. Or would you say it's a little more nuanced than that, perhaps? I mean, like all things, the truth usually lies in the middle. And that's kind of where I stand. For me, I saw his rookie year and I was like, okay, I clearly see that there's stuff to build on here in terms of arm strength and decision making. Although the decision making was worse in year two, I do think he had some bad moments in his rookie year that kind of gets glossed over. So I was hoping... He's been bad since the bye week, if you want to be fair. I just uh, I don't like that rationale. I just think that it's con two completely different seasons. Like, how many months is it between January and September? Like, that's just... It's not, it's not a fair, like, connection in my mind. Completely different coaching staff, different personnel. Like, I just don't... I don't think you can comp uh, compare the two. And what I was hoping for after his rookie year was... I clearly saw that there was deficiencies in the wide receivers and skill position in 2021. So what I was hoping for is they were going to go after, they were going to follow the uh, the train of thought that a lot of other teams in their young The Dolphins. Team, exactly. Dolphins, Bills, Tyreek Hill, Stephon Diggs, Jamar Chase for Joe Burrow. I was hoping that they were going to follow that. J AJ Brown for Jalen Hurts. I was hoping that they were going to go in that direction and get the young stud wide receiver who was coming off his rookie deal, and they were going to get Mac that, as well as, I don't know if I necessarily wanted Josh Daniels to stay, but I was I, I wouldn't have been opposed to it if it had happened. So I was kind of hoping that that was the direction they were going to go. Um, naturally, it's Bill Belichick, so when everybody's zigging, he decides to zag. Um, and that was, that was kind of unfortunate for Mac. And I just think that with the addition of Bill O'Brien and hopefully some additions to the, the skill positions – this offseason, I think that he can really take a jump from what his rookie year was. So I said I was going to give Mac Jones his rookie year and not pick apart his rookie year. But if I wanted to, I could say that since the bye week, with Josh McDaniels, 
he noticeably declined in the quality of his play. And there's a lot of talk about the rookie wall, and maybe Mac hit the rookie wall, but he seemed to have the rookie wall carry over through his entire sophomore season. So I don't well, I don't like the excuse of it's just the coaching because with Josh McDaniels we have seen Mac underperform in the past. But I just think that's that's because of who they played. I mean, if you look at who they played past the bye week, the Colts who were very good, and then they played the Bills who Josh Allen unfortunately owns us, and the offense didn't even play that bad that game. And then they played the Jaguars, and the Jaguars had a million people on the COVID list that year, so that's that that game's just kind of a wash. And then they played the Dolphins on the road in January, which is like the worst thing possible for the Patriots historically. And then they had the wild card game against Buffalo. So they had two games against Buffalo down the stretch, and Buffalo was one of the best teams. We saw how they played in the divisional round that year. They went toe to toe. Josh Allen went toe to toe with the Chiefs. Buffalo is clearly a good team, but to say that losing to Buffalo is can hand wave that away when Buffalo clearly is far away from a championship themselves. Really, that just puts into perspective where the Patriots are, don't you think? I wouldn't say that Buffalo is far away from a championship. Why That's, would you say that? I, w- I think they're clearly far away. Every time they get into a important game against a team that is ready to go to that next level, they can't. They can never win. They haven't. Really? Even, they haven't made it, made it out of the AFC. Not okay, that we but, don't, it doesn't need to be a Bills discussion. My point is: is the Bills. As you said, they own the Patriots, and I just don't think that is a good sign. It's not like the Bills are out here winning Super Bowls every other year. You're being owned by a team that has a lot of difficulty with more than just one other team in the AFC. I just think it really goes to show you where the Patriots stand on the totem pole of the AFC. And I think a lot of that has to do with the players around Mac. I don't think that's all because their quarterback is not good enough. I just think if you look at, especially last year, you had... They added Devontae Parker, who I like, and then they added Tyquan Thornton, who has put two stiffs, I would say, so I've, far from what I've oh seen. Oh, dear God. I just wouldn't Devontae say Parker is a 50-50 ball guy, shies away from contact, and Tyquan Thornton... What do you mean shies away from contact? Give one example. Just one. Uh, I'm not going to... I can't recite all the games off the top of my head like you. Yeah. I'll be... I'm a big uh, eyeball test guy. I'm not a big stats guy. But I feel like I remember a throw down the sideline that in a in a game where the Patriots this past season were not quite out of it yet, and it's because it was Devontae Parker shied away from contact, Mac Jones ended up throwing an interception. Do you know the throw I'm talking about? So I'm talking about week one against Miami, that opening drive. drive. No, I think it was later in the year than that. Mac Jones threw its interception because Devontae didn't want to go up for the ball. Maybe it was Nelson Aguilar. Regardless, I just think that Devontae Parker is a good player. He's not... The number one, one that they need. I don't hate Devontae Parker, Parker as a player, but I I, 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 I guess I agree with you in the sense that he's not enough to elevate Mac, but I I don't know. I don't I don't even remember what your original point was. I just well, don't I think Devontae and Taekwon are, are – they're definitely not great uh, additions in my opinion. So exactly. exactly. That's my point is that they are not giving Mac enough to really succeed. And you could say, well, how much, how much do you have to spoon feed this guy for him to succeed in the NFL? I don't think you need to spoon feed him. That's a fair narrative that people have against him. I I just don't know because if If everything's perfect and going well, then Mac Jones can perform. Well, when is everything going to be going well in the NFL? Not often. But But if if you look at all the other quarterbacks that are doing well, exclude Mahomes because he just won a Super Bowl without his wide receiver one. But Mahomes is clearly the the high class of the AFC and the NFL. But if you look at Josh Allen, proof that great the greatest talents don't need the receivers. Are you not going to have Mahomes on your roster? I understand. That is like an unfair comparison. But there are more than one. There's more than one quarterback in the NFL that can elevate people around him. Yes, but how? If you look at the quarterbacks that are doing well right now, Burrow, who is very good, but clearly got elevated when Jamar Chase came in. He was elevated, but he was playing well without Jamar before he got hurt in his rookie season. Yes, but that he was not going to make it to the Super Bowl without Jamar Chase. Well, unfortunately, we don't have the answer to that. And, and if Josh Allen who I believe is very, very good, clearly got elevated by Diggs. And then Jalen Hurts, who clearly got elevated by A.J. Brown. Jalen Hurts was a stiff before A.J. Brown got there. Josh Allen's a perfect example, once again, to go back to the Bills. Elevated with Stephon Diggs and yet can't get over the hump. And Josh Allen is exponentially more talented than Mac Jones. So really, even if you got Mac that guy, if Josh is here with Stephon, 
even if you got Mac Jones, a Stephon Diggs level talent, which they will not do because the Patriots do not pay for good players. They hate talent on the Patriots. We all know that. We can get to maybe Bill and the Patriots later, mm. the state of the organization, because I, I do actually have a lot of thoughts on that as well. All negative as well. If you were to say Josh Allen's here, Mac Jones here, elevate Al- Allen with Diggs, elevate Jones with a Diggs type talent, Mac Jones is still not going to be as good as someone like Josh Allen. And he is a guy that has been unable to even make it out of the AFC. So really, the the question comes down to this. Was Mac Jones dealt a bad hand? Yes. Was he right to be frustrated? Yes. But put all that aside even, is he the guy? Do you see the talent in him to push the Patriots past the threshold they need if they want to actually be contending for championships, not contending for a playoff win? But to contend for championships, how... If real quick, how many quarterbacks do you think are contending for championships right now? Mahomes? Contending for championships on a year year in and year out basis? Yeah. Uh just purely quarterbacks, I would say Mahomes, Allen, and Burrow. In the NFC, I would add Jalen Hurts to that list. I think he's proven himself that he can make it. I don't, but we'll say. He's made it farther than year Josh in Allen. Year, I'm, I'm saying year in and year out. Yeah, yeah okay. okay. Team's still going to be loaded next year. I think whoever's the quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers is going to be competing for a championship. I think that's mostly because of Shanahan, but. I think that there are very few. I agree with that. But but maybe Trevor Lawrence is a guy who's on the cusp of being one of those guys. Maybe Jalen Hurts, if you don't think he is, he's on the cusp of being one of those guys. Why not at least be open to the idea that Mac isn't the guy? I'm not maybe to win a. I don't think you'll win a Super Bowl with Mac Jones. I just then don't. what are we? Then what? What is the point of riding it out with Mac? Don't we want to win another Super Bowl with? Because Coach you Belichick? still want to. You still want to compete. Who cares about who you win the Super Bowl with? Well, what? What are we riding out the this? Why are we playing out the string with Coach Belichick as the coach if we're not gonna because try to win a Super Bowl? He's still an, an elite coach in the NFL, but that doesn't mean that. I just don't like. What are you, we trying? What is our goal right now? Is as. as what is the Patriots organization's goal at the moment? Do you think Robert Kraft is trying to win another Super Bowl soon? No, no I think he'd like to, but I don't think that's the goal. The goal right now is to make it into the playoffs. He's said it many times this offseason. So how the bar has dropped since since Tom Brady left. That's what I'm saying, but you're, actually, so we, you're How long did we get in before think, Tom Brady was brought up? 20 minutes? Or not even? That was pretty good. Things changed, but your expectations never changed. That's why you are so negative to everyone on the team. My expectations have changed. Have they though? They you're, 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 all you're saying right now is, what are we doing if we're not trying to win a Super Bowl? Yes, my expectations are not to win a Super Bowl every other year like they were with Brady at the quarterback position. I'm not delusional in that sense, and I don't want Mac to be Brady, but I do want the Patriots to be contending for championships, not contending for playoff berths. I if if Bill is going to be good enough, and this is a Bill thing, but if Bill is going to be good enough to keep you around 500, and Mac is going to be good enough to maybe win you a playoff game which we still have not seen him do, but I'll give him the benefit of that doubt and say maybe Mac's good enough to win you a playoff game. To me, that's then what are we doing? That's not worth riding out at that point. If that's all we're going to be able to do, if you give Mac Jones a top-level receiver talent and magically fix all the problems on the O-line and make their decor young and fast and make them a really good team, is Mac Jones good enough to even make it that far still? To the Super Bowl? With, if you could patch every hole in the Patriots with Mac Jones, I still don't think they're a Super if Bowl you, team. I think that the Eagles and the with Mac Jones have the same ceiling as they do with Jalen Hurts. I just disagree. I think Jalen Hurts is a way better athlete than Mac Jones, and that's where the quarterback position is trending. I like Mac Jones as a thrower more than Hurts, but, and, and I think Hurts is obviously better runner, so I think things even out. Should we address the elephant in the room? That there may be a guy that is in the <sighs> Patriots locker room even. You might not even need to 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 look elsewhere for the for the for the answer at the quarterback position, and his name is Bailey Zappi. Should the, we get into the, Bailey Zappi? Bailey Zappi. The He'll biggest, be competing for the job this off season. The biggest. So you you raise a question: Will he be competing? Will, oh, I didn't. I didn't question. I stated it. I think he will be. And you think he has a good chance to win? I think Mac Jones is going to be your starter in Week One, and I think it's going to be because of Robert Kraft. But if you wanted to isolate it and just say who do I think had a who would actually have a chance, I think Bailey Zappi would absolutely have a chance. So you think right. Bailey Zappi is good, if not better, than Mac Jones? I think Bailey Zappi showed very strongly in his rookie season. I don't. I, for the record, during the time that 
Mac Jones went down with his ooh, his grotesque injury. Really, my prayers, thoughts and prayers go out to him because that was that was graphic. I was worried about him, but it, we don't have to get into that. Thank God he made it back. Um, but when he went down with that gut wrenching injury, um, Brian Hoyer, I was a person who wanted Hoyer to come back in and not Zappy. I thought I I had actually seen Zappy in person at the pre in the preseason. Correct? We were at a yeah, we went to the the Giants preseason. And I thought, oh, this kid, you know, he he has nothing that I haven't seen before. He, he was a gamer that. in that game. He He's throwing the ball away, throwing bad, making bad decisions. He looked like he wasn't even ready to be in the league. So I wanted to at least have. I wanted to ride out with Brian Hoyer. Um, I'm a, not a Hoyer guy either. I thought it was the lesser of two evils at the time. But then Hoyer goes down at Lambeau, and Zappy comes in and does okay. Wins you two games after that. And I was of the opinion that uh, Bailey Zappi could be a guy for the Patriots. And I think he played better than Mac Jones in Mac Jones' second year. In the 2022 NFL season, I thought Bailey Zappi outperformed Mac Jones from the small sample we saw. And if Bailey Zappi is capable of a year two jump of any sort, then I do think he'd be able to compete with the position for, with Mac. So th- this, this is my thing with Bailey Zappi. I it, I could break it down game by game, but I just don't think it's necessary. I game think, by game, as in almost one at Lambeau and then one two straight. And you want yeah, you almost won at Lambeau. How many of his touchdowns came after the play clock expired and get in that game? Like sometimes I, you get breaks. Yeah, yeah. Four four did the Chiefs late. get some breaks on their way to the Super Bowl this year? Anyway, Anywho, not a good argument, but go on. You completely threw off my train of thought. Bailey Zappi. He came in and was a game manager. Like he did nothing exceptional. And because and the reason that the offense looked better than it did with Mac is because I think it started in the summer or the spring even where Mac saw the pl- what the plan was and never bought in. And never bought in exactly. And whose fault is that? You can that I'm I have I'm not going to argue with you that Mac had uh Attitude issues last year. I'm not the guy, the guy that's like all. Oh, Aaron Bell coaches on the sidelines a little bit more than attitude issue. I would say every, every everything that he did. I'm not going to say that it was justified, but I think that the reason the offense looks smoother and maybe a little bit more uh, competitive with Zappy is because Zappy was a rookie and he was yes coach, yes coach, yes coach. To as a rookie should be, sure, sure yes, and that's the reason it looked better, but. He even I just don't even think he made that many plays. In Green Bay, he managed the game. Against the Lions, he managed the game. In the I'll give you the Browns game. He looked good, but it was also the Cleveland Browns who had like four wins last year. So well, How many wins did the Bears end up with, and how did Mac Jones look against them? How did Sappy look against them? Better than Mac Jones for a stretch, and yeah, he had a bad second half. He, his, dri- his drives were two plays each. He had two more plays than Mac Jones made. Lead- Mac Jones couldn't see the first down line. Am I wrong? I just, just coming I'm, off of that graphic injury. Maybe he was just a little banged up. Still, I don't know. Maybe they rushed him back. I think Bailey Zappi showed well. I think just to say the offense looked better is a is a gross simplification of it. I you had an offense that looked like it couldn't do anything right. No one was on the same page, and all of a sudden, Zappi gave as much as it was a asinine question to ask. Matt Patricia, if he felt vindicated after the Lions win. That is absurd, and I could rant about that for half an hour. I could give you a half hour on that. But the reason that question was was posed to him, in fairness, was because it looked like as soon as you had a guy that bought into the offense, things started looking functional. And that is a huge knock on Mac Jones because it shows that maybe his lack of buy-in, maybe if Bailey Zappi was your starter from week one, the Patriots are the debacle that they ended up being this season. I just think that their ceiling with Mac Jones at quarterback is infinitely higher than it is with Zappi. I think when you saw Zappi buy in, and that's hit the best he can be. The but what, what do we have to believe that Zappi, after a few games, how do you know that's the best he can be? Because when you give Mac Jones the benefit of the doubt. 5'11s with heels on. Mac Jones isn't some giant himself. But he has he's more built to be a quarterback. He has the better arm. He has better accuracy. I I like Mac's mobility a little bit more than Zappy, but it, they're both kind of irrelevant. I just, I just think mobility. That, I'd give Zappy Zappy maneuvers at the pocket. You want to get, want me to give you my biggest knock on Mac? I'll even put aside all the crap he was doing on the sidelines and air now coaches. 
Mac Jones came into the league allegedly as smart, knows the game, good decision maker, mentally tough. When I watch Mac Jones play, I see him buckle under pressure, make bad decisions with the ball. His first ever snap, he he turned around and threw it behind him, and it was a blessing it wasn't a fumble against the, the Dolphins. Ball, it wasn't his first snap. Well, first snap that where he was going to throw, attempt to throw the ball. Correct? Correct. Didn't yeah, they yeah, run? It was, it, was first, first, it was their first passing play. Exactly. Right, that's what I meant to say, first passing play. Thank you for keeping me honest, though. I appreciate mm-hmm. that. And I went, oh, wow, that's not a good sign. And obviously that's not who he ended up being, but to an extent it is. He, he made a lot of bad decisions, does not move well in the pocket, way too late to throw the ball away at times and has taken so many bad sacks. I th- I just and think I, a, Zappi just maneuvered the pocket so much better, stood I, in the pocket, I, delivered throws. I just think a lot, a lot of this is recency bias. You're, I don't I, think I, it's the way you're looking bias. at it, in my mind, is 2022, and that's it. I just cited an example of Max rookie season. He balled out against the Dolphins. They lost. He, 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 looked, looked, he, he did not ball tr- out against the Dolphins. He was 29 of 39, almost, almost threw for 300 yards, had a touchdown, no, no picks. picks. I think he looked... Very good in that game. I think that's one of the best games he's played. Probably not a popular take, but I think that he looked really... He had some good zip on his throws. I think he looked really solid in that game. It, it's very simple for me. If Mac, if the scouting report on Mac is A, B, and C, and I don't see A, B, and C, then I'm not even thinking about can he work on D in the offseason. I haven't even seen the things he's supposedly supposed to be good at, which, to just say it again, is the being mentally tough, making good decisions. You're just wrong. I don't. Well, he, we're gonna disagree. Like it's, he obviously made good decisions in year one. The real answer is I don't think Mac or Zappi are getting the Patriots to winning another Super Bowl. In so, all fairness. So what do you? What, if your GM Daniel comes, like that in segue? In, comes into Gillette Stadium tomorrow and says, "I'm drafting a quarterback." In what round? Depends on who's who I like and who and where they. Are. I, I think Anthony, Anthony, Richardson, Anthony Richardson's the name. I yeah. I would not take Anthony Richardson at the at fourteen. Okay. I think there's too many holes, right? I think that well, the the beauty of Mac and Zappy, if there is any, <laughs> is that they do fit into the Patriots' offensive scheme that's been established. Part of the reason I think the Cam Newton season was so bad because the Patriots tried to use a quarterbacks with weapons they had never tried to use before. And it was growing pains that they only had one year to try to work on, and they never really got to establish anything. I think if you draft a guy like Anthony Richardson, yeah, he'll be sitting. I'm assume, I'd assume he'd be sitting that first year, or maybe even two years, behind somebody, either Mac or Zappi. But your offense would be so different with a guy like Anthony Richardson. I'm not, And maybe that would help them because they need to modernize their playbook a bit. But I just think... I don't think Anthony Richardson's the answer unless he ends up being Josh Allen. And what are the odds of him being Josh Allen? Fairly low. But I, I do think that I would keep looking in the draft. I think every other year maybe until you, you can take shots on a guy in the low rounds. Whoa. Why are you rolling your eyes? What, how, what do you think of the Jets as a franchise? I think that I'm past the point of thinking the Patriots are the sacred cow. Oh, and I don't, God. Um, I used to laugh at the Jets, but how quickly we became the Jets. We're oh, not the Jets. We were in the playoffs last year. Last year? The year before. La- like, how how were we last year compared to the Jets? About the same. Oh, Two God. Two miraculous wins, wins against them. them. Um, mirac- the f- whatever. Roughing, should have been roughing the, roughing the passer and keeping Mac Jones from throwing a pick six that maybe ended his career in New England. That's a timeline we'll never get to see play out. Followed by Marcus Jones, the only maybe bright side in the whole year other than Ramondre Stevenson, with a insane end of the game. But other than that, you you could even, even if you split against the Jets, now what are you compared to the Jets last year? Don't look down on the Jets like we're so much better You're than just them. So, so wrong. The Jets are an incompetent franchise. What are the Patriots of the since Tom Brady left? You want to get into Mid- it? Middling. We're middling, for sure. If you want if, if I think I, the Patriots look completely like they're tearing apart the seams everything that seemed so good when brady was here is now is really just falling apart brady's not gonna leave and you're not gonna have 12 wins it's just not gonna happen but they maybe brady could leave you have eight nine wins but everyone still respects the coach the locker room is still unified the player survey comes back positive there's not airing out coaches on the sideline no, but everything's just come apart. Every the patriot, your owner is not getting involved in personnel decisions. I I think that 
Brady, could, you expect a drop off when Brady leaves, but you don't ex- expect the whole thing to come apart at the seams. I just think it's been unreal what I've lived through to see the Patriots, just the downfall of the organization without Brady. Do you? Do it's you, a whole separate Mac, topic. Can, can Mac Jones win you back? What What has to happen in twenty twenty three for you to be like, fine? Let's Mac. Let's see what you can do in the, your fourth year. Mac Jones can win me back. I was not against Mac Jones. In his rookie year in 2021, I, I was not high on him. I was not low on him. I, I was pleasantly surprised. Thought he had a good rookie season by rookie season standards. Not a great season in general. But when you have that lens on, I thought he was was good. And I was looking forward to year two. See a jump. He came back. He was in better shape. And yeah, he lost me with his, his attitude. But I think if he could mentally reset and come back in good shape like he was last year, now with an offensive coordinator. And I think if he buys in and plays well, and it's not just Mac Jones. A lot of guys need to win me back. Bill Belichick needs to win me back. If Mac Jones and Bill Belichick are on the same page and both put together a, a representative product on the field, then they could both win me back. But I need to see results in the playoffs. I need okay. to see I need to see at least at least one playoff win this year to have any sort of hope. If they win a playoff game and lose in the second round to a better team, but I, I feel that there's reasons to be hopeful going forward, then I will. But I'm still not. I'm still drafting a quarterback in the in the later rounds of the draft. I'm sorry. I think that until you get, I hate to say the word, but one of the a unicorn like Patrick Mahomes or, because Patrick Mahomes, as much as he he is clearly the best quarterback in the league, so maybe it's an unfair thing to say, but. There are not just there's not just one guy in the league that good. There you why not keep taking chances in the later rounds? Are the Patriots that ex- exemplary at drafting that they're going to be wasting picks by taking a chance on a quarterback? They can't draft half the positions well anyway. So why not use one of those picks instead of drafting a, b- a bum receiver? Just take a quarterback. You that receiver wasn't going to be good anyway. The Patriots couldn't hit a receiver in the draft if there was one bad receiver in it. They'd take the bad one. That's what we did. Exactly. exactly. Nikhil Harry, thank you. Proves my point. I just think that they'll draft. The problem with you is that I just think you can't escape this. They'll draft another quarterback. You'll be like, this is the guy. And then he'll play and not be that amazing. And then you'll be like, he sucks. Let's draft another one. And, and until, until probably you'll be on your deathbed. And because they didn't draft the best quarterback in the NFL, you'll be like, what are we doing? I will forever be warped because of Tom Brady, but I am also uh, open-minded enough to realize that no one else is Tom Brady. No, not even Patrick Mahomes. I'll say that. Um, but I love Joe Burrow. There are quarterbacks in the league I like. I would be very happy with Joe Burrow as a Patriots fan. The Patriots have had 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 the years the Bengals have had with Joe Burrow since Brady. I would be happy, even though they haven't had a championship. So if they make it to the Super Bowl and draft a top three quarterback in the NFL. I'm just saying if the Patriots were knocking at the door and it's complicated. I think the Patriots organization is just, they have so much to win me back. It's Mac Jones isn't even necessarily at the top of my list. I think Bill Belichick is the top of my list. But that's a whole separate tangent. I know today we were really going to focus on Mac Jones. Yeah, I think we've probably covered most of it. Yeah. Yeah. The beauty of all of this is that we're a fan of Boston sports teams and the Patriots are the, the bottom of the barrel right now. So... How about the Celtics? Segway. I did. I did want to touch on the Celtics. Um, I'm a huge Celtics fan, and I thought I would. My opinions on the Celtics are a little bit paradoxical. It might seem. On one hand, I feel as though they're the best team in the league for two years. They have been. I thought they would win it last year. They should have. And as soon as this year started, I thought they should win, and they would. But at the same time. Last year, I also felt like while you were knocking at the door, and this is your year, you gotta you gotta do it because you never know what's gonna happen next. And that might seem contradictory, but it's how I feel. And in these past month, in the past month or so, I've had this nagging feeling of the Celtics should have won it when they had the chance last year. Um, this kind of culminated last night. Last night, the Celtics played the New York Knicks at home, and they lost in double overtime by two. Al Horford missed a three at the buzzer to would have won the game. Um, I, th- I don't want to say the Celtics are in trouble, but I think the Celtics are in trouble. They have a better roster than last year. With the, ad- dispute, with the addition of Malcolm Brogdon, I don't think it's disputable. Malcolm Brogdon makes this team a tier better. 
But their philosophy has changed, and I think it's in part due to Joe Mazzulla. There are two guys I want to, three guys I want to get to: Joe Mazzulla, Jason Tatum, and Robert Williams. Not necessarily in that order. Celtics need Robert Williams. If he played last night, you win that game. Mm. I don't know if you didn't watch the game. Did I did. You? That well, near the end of the game, it was painfully obvious that without anyone to block out that big stiff on the Knicks who couldn't hit a free throw to save his life. Um, if you don't have a guy getting boards in the final minutes of games, you're going to be in trouble. They could Knicks got offensive board after offensive board, and that's because Rob Williams isn't on the floor. Al Horford's not a, a typical big that's going to be getting you boards. He'll get a board here and there, but that's not the kind of player he is. And Al Horford's great, but he's old and his skill set's limited. He does what he does for you excellent, but he's not going to be that big for you. That's Robert Williams. Grant Williams isn't that big for you either. Blake Griffin doesn't get minutes. You need Robert Williams back healthy in the playoffs. And if that means resting him now, I think he's dinked up right now, and that's why he's not playing. I'm worried, though. He's been hurt consistently since they drafted him. I think he's great when he's out there. If a, He's a little timid when he's out there, but they're a better team with them, and they need him healthy for the playoffs. What concerns me is, as I've been watching the past couple of games, I would say that the last two weeks, what, what was everyone saying about them in the playoff run and after the All-Star break last year? Their defense was like... In, like all uh, their philosophy has completely shifted away from defense this year. I know, and that concerns me. Is I just don't feel like they can get a stop. So I I'll push back on that. They absolutely have shifted away from defense, but I think the offensive style they play is one. It's it's a lighter load on them physically throughout the regular season. Playing that kind of grind out style defense is going to exhaust your team. And Tatum clearly didn't have legs in the finals last year. Mm. I think. Whether consciously or not, the team fo- shifted focus to an offensive style of basketball. I mean, the first couple months of the year, they were on pace to be the best offensive team, shooting the three all time. They've fallen off that pace by a long shot by now. But that style is easier to play. It's less taxing on the body. And it's you're built to last playing that kind of offense. And you're going to live and die by the three. And last night, you didn't have anyone getting boards. You didn't have anyone hitting their threes. Mm. And they lost. Um I think if they get right and are healthy, they should still be the favorite. I don't think there's anyone in the East that should beat you. I don't I don't want to say don't fear the Bucs, but I think you should be able to beat the Bucs. And people are saying, oh, the Knicks are a bad matchup for you. The Cavs are a bad matchup. Just the how quickly the narrative has changed. The fact that teams like the Cavs and the Knicks are even being mentioned in the same breath as the Celtics is such a drastic shift yeah. in tone from the way people were looking at them at the beginning of the season. People thought they were a wagon. Why They're going to get to 65 wins. They're going to be the best team in the league start to finish. They're going to do what they should have done last year. The Warriors are not as good this year. You might not even have to see them. And I'm a little worried, and I'm a little worried that it goes back to your two most important people right now, Joe Mazzulla and Jason Tatum. I think Joe Mazzulla... He has an attitude about him that I don't dislike, but I, it's not entirely warranted. I'm I'm not convinced he has he's earned any right to have the swagger he has, mm. and maybe that dictates respect in the locker room. But I'm not sure it pans out when he has to be held accountable for his coaching decisions. Yeah. yeah so I was, the game against the Knicks, I was watching, and and the double overtime, or sorry, uh, the first overtime when Tatum drove to the basket at the very end, that would have won the game. Tatum should hit that shot. He left it short, and I would have liked for him to hit it as well, obviously. But I really would have liked Joe to call a timeout, and that's been a pretty constant critique of his coaching style is the lack of timeouts timeout. at the right time. Um, I don't. I know you're not really. You you feel like you have a feel for when timeout should be called. That's like your thing. But, but it is my thing. <laughs> um, what what were your thoughts in that specific moment, and just kind of overall, I guess, and just the timeout thing. So I had no issue with the way the first overtime went, but I will uh, bring us back to the second overtime. I believe Celtics drew up a design play down to last possession of the game in the second overtime, which is this possession ended up not leading to a basket. They draw up a play. Play isn't there. Tatum gesturing around for people to move, and it's not there, and then they call timeout. Now you only have six seconds or so left. Joe Mazzulla was really late to use a timeout in that instance, which led to, after that inbound, instead of a design play, it ended up being Tatum go make a play. 
He dishes the ball to Al, Al Horford, gets a decent look, can't hit it. Um, yeah, I, I just think Joe Mazzulla, I, I think coaching is not the most important thing in the NBA. I'm not saying anything revolutionary there. But I do think bad coaching can hurt you in the NBA. And I don't want to say Joe Mazzulla is a bad coach, but I do think that he needs to, and the Celtics need to, be able to manage these end-of-game situations better than they do. They almost let the Cavs crawl all their way back a couple nights ago. Right. And I think that is the Celtics taking their foot off the gas, and I think it starts at the top. And if you want to say it's not the coach, then it starts at the top with, with Tatum. And I think you got to wonder where his priorities are. Yeah. He had 40 points last night, but he's turning the ball over in the end of the game. He's alligator-arming the game winner that probably should have hit. And he made a good pass to Al at the end, but I don't know. I just I think Tatum is clearly a big guy. He's he's very big about wanting to be in with the with the the NBA popular crowds. He tried his ass off in the All Star game to win the MVP. You can win that MVP, but you gotta show me you care when it matters too. And overall, I've just been uninspired by the Celtics lately. I don't want to say I'm in panic mode. Um, they're number two in the I'm East. I'm close to it. You're close? To panic mode. Well, you've been more negative on the Celtics than me for two years now. And last year I was right. Last year you were right, but I just Until think, they, you know, didn't win the finals, but other right. than that. I just think that there's something about the... I know this is a very, like, there's no stats involved. There's a lot of feeling. I just think the vibe of the team right now is kind of off. And I just think that there's a, a lack of motivation i'm trying to think of the right word i'd like to think it's a mid-season kind of slump but mid-season's over they have 17 games left i believe right and i i guess it's before st patrick's day so maybe they were like we play the knicks who cares but how about after blowing a 28 point lead to the nets you get two days in between and then you play the knicks on national television i would want them to go not say who it's the knicks who cares we just Made the we blew the biggest lead of this NBA season. We're ready to blow doors against the Knicks. They're, I'm sorry for them. They caught us on a bad day. We're not in a good mood. We're ready to show the world that what we're made of. And instead, they lay an egg, crawl their way back to send it to overtime. And while they battled, they you didn't you didn't take care of business and you lost the game again. So what did you really show anybody? Yeah. Now people are saying the Knicks are a bad matchup for you. I, if I'm Tatum, I would be, for them. I, Tatum should be pissed. He should think I don't have a bad matchup. Where I want to see that killer mentality out of him i remember last year that uh the broadcast had put it up um tatum last year in march was putting up like 35 a night and i, I don't i don't know exactly i know he had 35 against the Cavs or 42 against the Cavs or something like that but i just feel like he struggled lately just even just in his play yeah, he had 40 last night but scoring doesn't do any, mean anything to me it's it's when you score and if you help the team as a whole and tatum can put up 40 and they can still lose and he will still have a few turnovers and I, I need to see some sort of change from the Celtics. But to wrap up, I did uh, I, I did have an idea for the Celtics. It's it's kind of a sad desperation play. Oh but I think you got to look out for a big in the buyout market and try to pick up some some big who's not who's ro roaming free right now. Daniel Tice. Daniel Tice is a, on a team, and I wouldn't want him if he was available. Make the play, Brad. I would want Brad Stevens has done a great job, but I he got Blake Griffin, but Blake Griffin doesn't play. So either Joe Mazzulla needs to say, I need to put out Blake or Muscala to get boards. I don't know. I think once again, I think that comes back to Joe, but I don't want to keep rambling on. I just think the Celtics, if Rob Williams is going to be healthy, then at least for the end of this regular season, while he's getting right, they need to have a big who can at least get a few boards for them. Or they're going to be in trouble against teams like the Knicks. And I never thought I'd say that, but Clearly, it's the case. Yeah, I just, I think that like a scrappy team like the Knicks or the Cavs in round one would concern me. But what obviously really concerns me, and probably everyone, is the Bucks. I'm going to ask you before we uh, finish up here. The Celtics play the Bucks in round two. What is your confidence level? Um, I mean, it depends how who they play in the first round, how it went. In general, how do I feel about a Celtics Bucks? playoff match i feel good i feel i i still feel like this team and maybe i'll be 
proven wrong once again because they didn't finish the job last year, but I still, at the end of the day, am confident in this team. I am. I think these are struggles they're going through that they should be able to figure out. I think you should take, be able to take care of the business, take care of business against the Knicks, against the Cavs. And I put the Bucks on that list. They're the most legitimate threat in the East, and you might have to go through their court to, to get out of the East, but I still think you got to... I have to believe that they could beat the Bucks. They beat them last year. The Bucks didn't have Middleton, but Middleton's old. He's not healthy. He and, never plays. And the Celtics are better than they were last year. I I know you don't agree with that, but Malcolm Brogdon is a huge, huge offensive threat that they added to their team. So and I and I think Tatum is better than he was last year. He's still having a lot of similar struggles, but I think he's better. I think Marcus Smart this year more so than any year has really settled into his role. As a distributor, he's never taking those bad shots that used to right. used to get so much hate for. Hit a big three last night they needed. So I think once they get rolling on all cylinders, which they will, I'll, I'd still take them against anybody. I'd still take them to get out of the East. And the only team I really feel in the finals is the Warriors, if they somehow made it because of the matchup. There's some kind of mental block there. Still, I'm not convinced it's gone. And the Suns. I think the Suns with KD are legit. But, well, I... Suns are just full of chokers. You could argue KD is just another one they added. But I'm sleeping on the Suns. Yeah, they're loaded talent-wise. They're more talented than you want. I don't even know if they're going to make it out of the second round. Well, that's how it goes. They probably won't. But, yeah, I to answer your question, I'd still I'd still feel good against the Bucks. But 17 games left, I guess we'll, I'll get back to you later about that. Do, do I have permission to say I told you so in May? You could. I mean, two weeks ago, I never... A week ago, I never thought I'd hear anyone say the Knicks were a bad matchup for you. So things change. We'll see. But yeah. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Slide Podcast. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and we will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks. Thanks.